What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today I'm going to walk you guys step by step in a tutorial on how to boost your internet speed where you're on Wi-Fi or Ethernet for your Xbox Series S or X. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, so first things first, my dog is not dead. She's just sleeping over here. She's had a long day of running around, eating, sleeping, and pooping. So you obviously want the highest internet speeds possible, whether you're playing online games, you wanna get the lowest ping, you wanna make sure you have a solid, consistent connection, or even if you're not an online gamer, you play all story-driven MMORPGs or something, Having a good internet connection that'll allow your Netflix not to buffer, your YouTube videos to be in HD, and your downloads to complete quicker. Now the built-in Wi-Fi card on the Xbox Series S and X is very good, same thing on the PlayStation 3. However, Ethernet is always gonna be a better option for both peak speeds up and down, and also more importantly than just peak burst speeds is consistency. However, a lot of people are renting a house or in an apartment where you can't be drilling into walls and dropping ethernet. You cannot uh, ask your internet provider to tap a drop into a specific room and you just don't wanna have ethernet cables running around your carpet or spend hours uh, unreeling a huge roll of ethernet cable, running it around the edges of your carpet and whatnot. And it's fully understandable. So I'm gonna go over a couple of methods of how you can get an actual ethernet connection without having to drill in your wall or anything like that. We're also gonna cover some settings in the software. We're also gonna cover some settings inside the Xbox Series S and X that you can uh, tweak to get a little bit better connection. We're gonna target the Google servers, which actually give you pretty good up and down speeds. Alrighty guys, so the methods that you can use to get ethernet to the back of your console, whether you're on PS5, PS4, Xbox, Xbox Series, without having to actually have a physical ethernet cable connected to your PC, would be with these two bad boys. So this is a repeater slash adapter. As you see, it has an ethernet drop on the bottom there. It's got a couple of little antennas here that you flip up like that. This thing is awesome. When I was in a hotel for three and a half months uh, for a class for my job, uh, I was getting about mm, three megabytes down and about 0 0.2 up. Uh, then I started using this. I tweaked the settings a little bit and I got up to about 30 down and about five up. No, no, 30 down and about three up, which is still absolutely atrocious, but it was better than what I was dealing with. It connects to your home Wi-Fi network and then you are able to plug in a physical ethernet cable from this into the back of your console and you will see some pretty decent little gains in uh, up and down speed. Now those are about $20, $25. I will have that one linked in the description below. That is an older model. They actually look a little bit sleeker and smaller nowadays and they're the same price. Now this thing is actually pretty fascinating how it works. It's some real black magic voodoo but it's pretty amazing. These things retail for about $50 and this is a pass-through power line kit. So what this thing actually does is takes the power lines in your house, the electrical wires running down your inside your drywall in your house and transfers internet connection through those. It's insane. I don't understand fully how it works, but I know how to hook these things up. You connect one of these bad boys to your modem and then you connect the other one to your laptop, console, whatever it is you're trying to get ethernet to and it basically absorbs all the internet connection out of your modem and then puts it into your electrical through your entire house and then spits it out on the other end to whatever you're plugging an ethernet cable into. And you don't need to drill any holes or anything and you basically have a direct ethernet connection from your modem all the way to the other side of your house without having to drill any holes. Alrighty, big dogs, over here on the home menu of the Xbox Series S. Keep in mind, the Xbox Series S and X are virtually identical when it comes to the operating system, how you navigate the menus. Literally, the only difference is the actual hardware. So if you don't have a shortcut or a tile pinned to the home menu here, how you're gonna get to settings, you're gonna press the Xbox Home button. You're gonna go over to, uh, all the way to the right, go down a couple of skoshes over there to settings and hit A. Go to general, go to network settings. The first time that you hook up your console, you're gonna set up a wireless network. As you see, damn, that's good internet. IPv4, it's what I'm connected to at the Momo. Now we're gonna come down here to test network speed and statistics so we can get a little idea of uh, what our up and down speeds are. I don't know why I did this motion here. That was a little aggressive. Harley, are you okay? Oh, the princess. Oh, big girl. Yeah, you're the prettiest girl with the ball. All right, decent, decent. We're getting at about 230 on the down and about 31 on the up. So those upload speeds get me pretty tickled. That's uh, very close to what I get over there on my PC, which is connected via ethernet. Those download speeds, um, 
you know, for some people that'd be majestic, that'd be fantastic. But me, I'm getting about 960 down on my PC, which is Ethernet connected. Um, but that's not terrible, and that's that's about what you're gonna get via Wi-Fi. Now, if I were to plug this directly in via Ethernet, uh, I probably would be closer to about four or 500. Uh, most likely wouldn't be getting about 1,000. So the Xbox Series S and X does have a gigabit Ethernet port on the back. However, even when you're plugged into Ethernet, very few users are actually claiming that they're getting those speeds. If you read a lot of the forums and Reddit and even Microsoft support page, uh, people typically are getting about 650 at the, at the very high end. And that's for a number of reasons. For one, they're actually probably getting higher speeds than that in game and with downloads. But when you run these speed tests here, this speed test, this speed test here goes off of a Microsoft server, which most likely is several states away from you. So it has to hop several times for it to actually get its results to you. So it's probably not super duper accurate, just something to keep in mind. It'll give you a general range of what you're in, uh, but it's not gonna be precise down to the wire. So if you're paying for gigabit ethernet, you're plugged in uh, via cat six to, uh, from your router to the back of your console, you're probably getting very close to what you're paying for. But honestly, I just run all my consoles uh, directly off of Wi-Fi. The only thing in my house that I have connected to Ethernet is my gaming PC because that's my primary streaming device. And also it's right next to where my Ethernet drop is in the wall. But uh, this is pretty acceptable speeds for me at least. 230 down and 31 up. I could, I could easily stream at 1080, 60 directly from the Xbox Series S to Twitch. I do it all the time and it looks really good. I never get any buffering issues. I don't lose any consistency. I don't get any bit rate fluctuations or anything like that. So if you're getting speeds like this, that's pretty much all you need for a console. It's not gonna drop your ping or anything like that. But we're gonna see if we can get that just a skosh higher. We're gonna do a couple of tests here and I'm gonna show you guys some settings that you can tweak. So, so another really cool feature here is you can check your bandwidth usage. So almost all internet service providers have a data cap. It's usually over a terabyte for your up and down speed for the month. And then you can usually pay about $30 a month for about an additional 300 gigs or another 40 or 50 bucks for unlimited data. And this is for Cox, Spectrum, AT&T. I've shopped them all. When I moved into this house about six months ago, I shopped extensively because I knew I wanted I knew I wanted a consistent gigabit for streaming and whatnot. So I did a lot of research also to find out about data caps as well as I do download a lot and upload a lot. So this is really cool. It shows you different time frames over the last 12 hours. Also historical usage. As you can see, these are quite a few, you know, 357 gigs. Um, I think that's right around the time I actually got the Series S, so I was probably downloading a lot of my games, doing a lot of updates, stuff like that. And it also shows you your current usage. So two kilobits, zero kilobits. As it's just an idle right now, there's no, it's not under load or anything like that. So over here in advanced settings, there's my IP address. If you guys wanna go ahead and DDoS me or dox me or anything like that, just kidding. This is gonna be blurred out post, post editing. Uh, my MAC address too, in case you guys wanna try and hack me that way. Uh, but we're gonna go over here to DNS settings. I'm in automatic right now, so it's automatically looking for close DNS servers. But if you go right here to DNS settings and select manual, we are gonna go off of Google servers, boys. So for the primary, it's going to be 8.8.8.8. Very easy to remember. And for the secondary, it's 8. Oh, oh jeepers. 8.8.4.4. Clutch, clutch. All right, let's run another internet speed test and see if that did anything for us. That's the Google servers, boys. All right, so no real change there. We're getting about 225 on the down, 31 on the up, so virtually identical. 0% packet loss, that's good. Latency, 56 milliseconds, that's not great. Uh, I, I typically like to keep mine 80 and below, which we are under that, but 56 isn't great. So we're gonna run one more. Alrighty, boys, we're gonna hop over there in the gamer heaven, hop on the Trooper 7 PC, and I'm gonna go over a couple more methods that could give you guys the speeds that you want. Alrighty, boys, over here at my PC, gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Now, this is my Netgear XR500 gaming router, which has a Duma OS or operating system, which lets you do a whole heck of a lot to your home internet. As you can see, I got the Xbox Series S. It's not really doing much of anything right now, but it has its up and down speed. Uh, and if you come over here to Device Manager, you can see I'm also connected to five gigahertz, which is what you want. Five gigahertz is much quicker than 2.4. However, 2.4 is a little bit more consistent. So like smart home devices, like security systems, they are generally on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, but you want your consoles connected on five gigahertz, but you want your consoles set up on five gigahertz. Now, if you come over here to QOS, you're gonna be able to allocate bandwidth to different devices. So 
I allocated 100% upload and download to my Xbox series. I virtually never really do that because there's no need. It's just me living in this house. So um, I don't need to fight for bandwidth with anybody or anything like that. If I'm on my console, I'm not on my PC and vice versa. So I just keep all that defaulted here. You also have an anti-buffy buffer and yep. You also have an anti-buffer bloat, which is pretty nice. If there's a um, high bandwidth, something going on, so you're gaming, streaming, whatever, it'll try and automatically give that device the majority of your bandwidth. Now, over here, this is an awesome feature for not only trying to keep your ping down in shooters, but you can also kind of cheese SBMM lobbies, SBMM lobbies in Warzone, Call of Duty a little bit. As you see, I have my gaming PC and my Xbox series here. PS5 will be here in about five days then that will be added here as well i have it in filtering mode you can set a little barrier it's a geolocational uh it's a geo filter which is think of it like a firewall for internet it will not accept any any servers from outside there so if you're trying to connect to a call of duty server or something they actually have profiles for call of duty over here and when you launch the game the servers for the game will actually pop up across this map here and you can target what you want to connect to i do have a full tutorial on this operating system here and how to um manipulate it if you will to try and get easier lobbies and stuff like that it doesn't work 100 percent of the time you also need to run a vpn with it in conjunction if i hide my face here uh, a little vpn you can make your location look like you're in switzerland or africa Two areas that have very, very low KD ratios. They're just, they don't play the game very often over there. Now, another way to get really good internet speeds on a Xbox Series S or X is with IPv6. So if you Google IPv6 Xbox, it'll take you to this support page here. Xbox One can connect to networks using two protocols that allow devices to transmit information. Traditional IPv4 communications protocol and a newer version IPv6 for Xbox One to connect to internet using IPv6. Your home router needs to have IPv6 enabled and your internet service provider um, ISP must support IPv6. So very few people are going to be able to actually get IPv6 due to one of these two things. Either your personal router or the internet service providers that are available in your geographic area. So if you're not in a large metropolitan area or something, it's just like AT&T fiber. It's probably not available in your area. But if you do have it, then you follow these steps here which I will have this linked in the description below, by the way, guys, along with all the equipment that I mentioned earlier, like that power line converter kit, all the things that I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below, whether it's an article or whether it's a product, it's down there below. All right, so I just ran a little internet speed test over here. I'm getting 10 milliseconds of ping from a New Orleans server, 945 down, 34 up, so pretty good that's connected to ethernet. And I do have IPv6 enabled on my router for both LAN and my WAN. Now that I have IPv6 manually enabled on my router, let's go back over to the Xbox Series S, see if it registers over there, as a lot of times from what I've seen in the forums, it does not. All the other devices in your house will be showing IPv6, but a lot of times the Xbox Series S and X uh, just won't connect and you need to do some troubleshooting from that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, boys, as you can see now, we are on IPv4 and 6, so let's run a speed test. I don't really think it's going to make much of a difference, but what do I know? I'm just a big dumb dummy. I need to get back in the gym. I lost like every little ounce of muscle mass I had. My arms look like noodles, Harley. Your dad's tiny. Yes, he is. Good girl. All right, so literally about the same there. 233 on the down, 229 on the up. Test her one, one more again, but I, I honestly didn't expect to get any difference because what I've, from what I've read, IPv6 and IPv4, it doesn't make a big difference on these new gen consoles at all. These actually do take a good amount of your data and I've ran quite a few on the Xbox and a couple on the PC too. And the ones on the PC, that's like a gig down. So it, it, it's putting a hurting on my bandwidth use. All right, we're back up there. So that's about what you're going to get out of it is about 238 down, 33 up. That's very good speeds for a console. I'd, I'd feel confident streaming with that, no problem. Hopefully this video was beneficial for you guys. I showed you guys some cheap products that you can use to increase your internet speed and get you ethernet if you do not want to be drilling into your walls. I showed you guys the difference or, well, not ne not tangible difference of IPv4 versus 6 on the Xbox Series S and X. If this video was beneficial for you guys. Liking the video helps it to get seen by more people so this information can help them as well. Subscribe for more tutorials like this and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos come online. Peace.